Well, UK comedian Charmian Hughes joins us all the way from London. She is here with her new comedy quest, Bra Trek, which suggests we fight back at stereotypes thrust upon us by childhood myths and fairy tales. Welcome to the cafe. It is great to have you here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This isn't your first trip to New Zealand, though, is it? Because you came last year to catch up with some, some friends that you made years ago yeah. in London, is that in, right? In 1981, when I was uh, working just in an office job in London, um, I met two New Zealand girls, and they kind of changed my whole perspective, stopped me being all so stiff upper lip, introduced me to a world of slightly wildish partying. <laughs> and when they went, after two years, I was back to New Zealand, I was totally bereft. Oh. I, mean, I, I, I was sort of put back into my stuffy English life. But then they'd pop over every few years. And then last year, one of them was going to be 60. Unbelievable. None of us have had any work done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I got one of those, uh, you know, round robin Facebook things saying, oh, I'm having my 60th birthday party, you know, thousands of miles from where I lived. And I thought, I'm going to go. Yes. And nice. as a comedian, I thought there must be something going on in New Zealand. There were three fantastic fringe festivals going on, and I had the most amazing time. And uh, it feels like yesterday, but I'm back again, arrived off the plane just now. Nice. So, yeah. No, it's not surprising you bumped into some Kiwis in London, because I think <laughs> half of New Zealand goes yeah. there. Um, but what was so special about that relationship? What was it that attracted you to these girls? I think that... I really came from a stuffy background. I, mean, right. I thought I came from a kind of theatrical, eccentric family. But we were really stiff upper lip, um, very traditional. And uh, they, they just didn't care. You, it, they, they just, you didn't have to be successful to have fun. That sounds like they were failures. They weren't failures. <laughs> but watching this right now, guys. But we have got such an English thing about you've got to earn your happiness. Right. You know, you've got to earn uh, your happiness, your state. A lot of that kind of thing comes out in my new show, actually. Yeah, well, we're, yeah. Speaking yeah. Of, we're, we're, nice. we're all about being laid back in Kiwi, so that's great. Uh, uh, your new show, Bra Trek. Bra Trek. So what, you've always had a bit of a problem with fairy tales? What's going uh, on? I've had a problem with bras, oh. and I've had a problem with fairy doesn't. tales. I know, well, so many people people saying, oh, I can't wait to take my bra off, it's so uncomfortable. It's the ultimate After relaxation. Um, or uh, finding one that fits. Well, I, uh, about 20 years ago, I walked into the bra shop that makes the bras for the queen, and Ooh. I never looked back. Um, and that was like a fairy tale thing. But one of them, the, the women who, you know, the founder of this bra place, she sold her story about yes. the Queen. Yes, I can remember yeah, hearing about the that. Yes, yeah. And they got their warrant taken away from them, and the Queen doesn't go there anymore, and I think that's a mistake, because come the royal wedding, you're going to notice a, a real difference <laughs> a difference <laughs> in the royal silhouette. I think so. I know, the poor founder of that bra company was devastated that it happened. She was so upset, she wasn't she? Really okay, upset. Okay, so, so we've got the bras, but where does the Star Trek come into it? Well, actually, I know I sound like a nerdy obsessional. Episode six of Star Trek series one, oh, yes, Mud's Women, one. is like a regurgitation of the story of Cinderella. Ah, yeah. nice. Oh, that sounds fascinating. That's about the only bit that Star Trek. So that I works get for loads me. Loads of angry Trekkies <laughs> turning up. But I do have a nice silver dress, silver space oh, dress. Oh, there you go. Well, well, quite a diverse career, haven't you? So let me just get this straight. You've uh, you've performed throughout four members of the Houses of Parliament, uh, yeah. as well as the prisoners. You emceed Glastonbury. Oh yeah, and, I've done that a few times. And you ran away to the circus, and then you went away from the circus to the yeah. comedy. Is that right? That is right. Yes, I had my office job where I met the New Zealanders. Um, and then they all went back to New Zealand and my life was dull. Uh, and so as a substitute for my New Zealand friends, I started going to clown school. <laughs> what you do? <laughs> Once a week as a kind of hobby to meet interesting people, you know, to, to replace the people I'd lost. Um, and then I found myself doing more and more of it and I gave up my job, um, did a bit of clowning, but I've never been able to stop talking. And clowning is a lot of being physically great. <laughs> And I just was a bit like that. And then I found stand-up comedy. Oh. Where it's, it was, all, yeah. it's all there. And yeah. speaking of that, if we need more, we need to come and see your show. Thank you so much. Thank Charlie. you. Thank I you. love you. Now, the show Bra Trek is part of the Auckland Fringe Festival, and it's on until Sunday. You can check out the Fringe website for ticket details. She's also going to be performing in Wellington at Bat Theatre and at the Fortune in Dunedin. You'll want to go and see that. That is going to be fun.